Professor Gray has already provided some useful concepts about grammar, and they actually get kind of complicated. So I asked specifically for some advice about how to teach grammar. This is a controversial issue among teachers and researchers. Some say that grammar should not be taught explicitly. In other words, rules and meta-language should not be taught. Others say that it must be taught explicitly. That's the only way that students will really learn. So that's a pretty good controversy in the field. Here's what Professor Gray said. What advice do you have for teachers about teaching grammar? One of the hardest things about teaching grammar is that sometimes it seems really straightforward to teach students how to create a grammatical structure or grammatical form. For example, I can teach students how to form the present perfect aspect of a verb phrase. These would be verb phrases like have been eating or has been getting. I've done this many times before. Students may be able to then complete some very guided exercises where they take verbs and they put them into the present perfect aspect and do this with a high degree of accuracy. But what becomes harder is when that student needs to go away and produce that form in a less structured context, like in conversation or in writing a paper on their own. They may have trouble knowing when they should use the present perfect aspect when they're speaking or writing outside of structured grammar activities. This is one of the reasons why it's so important when we teach grammar to pay attention both to form, but also to the function of the grammatical structures that we focus on. In particular, grammar teaching can be made much more useful and much more engaging when we teach using a lot of examples and when we explicitly address both the form and function of grammatical features. What this means is that we need to know not just how to form a feature, but also when to use it and what types of meaning those grammar structures convey. I'm a big proponent of using authentic examples. That is, we want examples to accurately reflect the language that we expect our learners to encounter in the real world. We want them to see examples that are similar to the language they're going to hear outside of the classroom. Now, sometimes we use what we call online corpora or very large collections of authentic language to get these authentic or real language examples. But this isn't always possible. And in some cases, it may not even be desirable because authentic language can be messy and confusing. And it may be more complex than what our students are ready for. But the key is that these examples should reflect the general patterns of the language. A simple example of this is making sure that we illustrate a structure in the language with the typical words that are common in that structure. For example, if we are teaching progressive aspect or verb phrases with be followed by an ing verb, we can use verbs that are actually common in progressive aspect, like am buying, is raining, was chasing, and so on. And we would avoid using verbs that rarely occur in the progressive like are replying, is believing, and are hearing. 